the lone survivor, the only person to witness what happened off screen after that gunman in Virginia began shooting at his former colleagues on live television. As Vicki Gardner recovers from a medically induced coma, her husband sharing her gripping account of the tragedy. Here's ABC's Jim Avila. This is where 17 shots rang out early Wednesday morning, killing two journalists. Today, new planks highlighting the exact spots of a crime scene that played out in front of a live TV audience. Vicki Gardner, on the other side of the microphone, survived the shootings. Her husband gave us her eyewitness account of the surprise attack. Did she get a feeling about who was the target? Allison obviously was the, the initial target. Adam, she says, was hit next. And then... He shot three times at my wife, and she was trying to dodge everything. He missed twice, and then she dove to the ground, curled up in a ball, and that's when he shot her in the back. Her husband, like other viewers at home, watched the mayhem unfold. I saw what happened, and then I started getting phone calls from people who had seen that and were wondering if it was live. And I, I of course, I, I just said, I don't know, I don't know. His wife, fighting to stay alive, picks herself up and walks to help. A phone call came in, and it was my wife calling from the uh, ambulance. She called me and said that um, <clears throat> she'd been shot and that, um, that she loved me and she'd see me at the hospital. All three victims of a deranged gunman, Vester Lee Flanagan, a former TV reporter with an embattled past with a local TV station, leading to the premeditated killing of two of its employees. So we just caught somebody going 69. 24-year-old Allison Parker was a sharp and bubbly reporter who covered everything from bacon fest to a recent special on child abuse. Experts say neglect is a form of child abuse that is just as damaging as physical or sexual abuse. She had just moved in with boyfriend Chris Hurst, an anchor at the same station. We would go to station events and appearances together as reporter and anchor, not as boyfriend and girlfriend, but we couldn't even really hide it there either because we just were so in love. Her cameraman, 27-year-old Adam Ward, was a big personality known for his sense of fun. They were a team. They worked together for over a year, um, day in, day out. Crossing paths years earlier at the same station, the former colleague who would eventually take their lives. World leaders are talking oil prices on the... Flanagan was a reporter who had struggled in small TV markets around the country for years, unable to work well with his colleagues. By 2012, Flanagan made it to Roanoke, Virginia, after having disappeared from television for more than seven years. Bryce Williams, WDBJ7. Now, with a new name, Bryce Williams, shielding his past from news station WDBJ, Jeff Marks is the general manager. Did you know that he had trouble at his previous station? He filled out the application as Vester Flanagan, but the people who were hiring him were looking at his resume, looking at his history as Bryce Williams. So as Bryce Williams, he had a relatively clean history. But soon, history would begin to repeat itself. Early on, there started to be issues reported, conflicts between he and his coworkers. It was one after another. Flanagan began to complain about harassment in the Roanoke newsroom. His trouble with the station seemed to be mounting. There was a series of complaints that he was just not behaving in a, in a professional manner. Flanagan had issues with several staff members of WDBJ, including Allison Parker and Adam Ward. We thought he had come in with an agenda to find things that he could uh, beat us up with. He threw a newspaper article on my desk and I looked at it and it was a newspaper article from Tallahassee that indicated that he had sued his previous or one of his previous employers. It was not an idle threat. Williams filed another discrimination lawsuit, this time against his new bosses, but not before he was fired in early 2013 and escorted from the station by police. He slammed his fist down on the table and threw a wooden cross at me and said, you're going to need these. Instead of leaving town, this time William stayed put for two years and somewhere along the way began setting a deadly plan in motion. Good morning, everybody. It's 6 a.m. Wednesday and Parker and Ward are out on location atop the scenic Smith Mountain Lake for their live report about tourism. DBJ7 Morning's Allison Parker is live in Bedford County to show us how the lake has grown over the years. Good morning, Allison. 
Good morning. And it's grown in so many ways. 6.43 a.m. Allison begins interviewing local official Vicki Gardner. Unbeknownst to them, a predator was lurking. The young journalists, at their most vulnerable state, focus completely on their interview. There is no warning. A gunman with a sneak attack unloading 17 rounds in all, one after another. Okay, not sure what happened there. We the stunned local anchor, Kimberly McBroom, unsure over what just happened. And I heard this pow, 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 and it did not register that it was gunshots. This freeze frame, caught in the dying cameraman's lens, reveals the shooter's image. Police quickly arrive at the scene, but the gunman is long gone. Flanagan drives about 25 miles to this FedEx, where he faxes ABC News a 23-page manifesto and suicide note, citing the June Charleston, South Carolina church massacre as a motive. He writes, the church shooting was the tipping point. In his note to ABC News, William cites other mass shooters from Columbine and Virginia Tech. Sung Wee Joe, that's my boy right there. Meanwhile, back at the station, we are following breaking news this morning out of Franklin County, news that has affected our WDBJ7 family very deeply. The rest of the news team struggles to balance grief and reporting. It is my uh, very, very sad duty to report that Allison and Adam died this morning, shortly after 6.45 when the shots rang out. Flanagan is on the run. Suspect is believed to be armed and dangerous, use caution. He takes to social media, posting videos of himself shooting his victims on Facebook and Twitter. Bryce Williams had carefully produced his final act. At 1120, the police identify the car he is traveling in. The vehicle has been confirmed as a silver Chevrolet Sonic 2015. But when they try to pull him over, he refuses and careens into the median. A lone trooper approaches, but the gunman had already taken his own life. He died at approximately one 30 p.m. today. In his getaway car, police discover a wig, sunglasses, a shawl, black hat, and three additional license plates, along with two Glocks and six magazines of ammunition. During all of this, the third victim, Vicki Gardner, is at the hospital, doctors struggling to save her life. She awoke from a medically induced coma and, according to her husband, is now in good condition. She's going to make a full recovery. Minus a kidney and some other small parts. Tonight, this tight-knit community and family mourning two promising lives cut short. It's just, the whole thing just, it just crushes my soul. <laughs> For Nightline, I'm Jim Avila in Roanoke, Virginia.